In this video, we talk about an interesting topic, and it is about the inverse of a matrix. And uh, please look at my definition here. I'm saying that the matrix B is going to be the inverse of a matrix A if you multiply the two matrices together. So I would like to emphasize that what I'm doing here is like matrix multiplication. So uh, before watching this video, you must have learned the matrix multiplication before, or you can watch one of my previous video about the matrix multiplication. It's a fairly complicated process. Anyway, um, B would be the inverse of A if uh, such a matrix equation is actually satisfied. And um, in that case, we use such a notation A to the power minus one to represent the inverse of A. And um, I hope such a notation makes sense to you because if you recall what you learned in numbers, for example, if I ask you for some numbers such that it is multiplied to seven and you get one, one is like the identity in a number system, right? And um, of course this number, everybody know it must be one over seven because seven multiplied to uh, one over seven, it must be one and um, this number, you can easily use the notation seven to the power minus one to represent that, right? So basically, now we are learning something like matrix, which is a new concept for quite a lot of, and this notation actually follow what we have learned before in school, right? And, uh, but please think about this problem. For example, if now I give you a two by two matrix, uh, which is given here, and if I'm asking you to tell me the inverse of A, um, it's not a simple process like what you have learned back in the school day, right? Uh, why? Because um, in matrices, never have the meaning of division. What you have learned is matrix multiplication. So it means that you have to make a guess such that uh, when A is multiplied to a certain matrix, it's going to be identity. And of course, in this case, identity is going to be uh, a matrix like this, which is of size two by two. So. Um, I'm saying that uh, these two matrix equations must be satisfied if your A finds such a inverse, right? But uh, it doesn't look like an easy guess at all because uh, if you recall the matrix multiplication, it is itself a fairly complicated exercise, right? For example, the first part of this matrix product is going to be the first row of the first matrix multiplied to the first row, first column of the second matrix, right? And um, so you have to make a good guess about all these numbers such that it comes out, um, it match your expectation that it's going to be the identity matrix. So um, it doesn't look like an easy guess. So uh, it gives you a sense that to find the inverse of a matrix is actually a difficult process. And that's the key goal of uh, this video. We will just focus on the easier case, which is the case where uh, the matrix A has size two by two. So before giving you the formula for the inverse of a two by two matrix, I would like to make the first note. It is the fact that uh, because of the complex nature of matrix multiplication, especially if M has a bigger size, let's say a five by five matrix, we expect that to find the M inverse is gonna be a long process. And fortunately these days we have lots of um, mathematical software to help us in this process, but uh, just let you know, theoretically speaking, when the size of M goes up and um, it's really quite a computationally inefficient process to find the inverse. And um, the second note is that I'm saying that um, not all square matrices have inverse. And uh, let's make a definition here. So if certain square matrix does not have the inverse, we call it singular matrix. And if it has inverse, we call it invertible matrix. And now I'll give you the formula to find the inverse of a two by two matrix, but I would like to emphasize that later on um, in a later video, we'll learn some more general methods to find the inverse of a square matrix, especially when the size of the matrix is getting bigger. So let's say now I write the two by two matrix, the big A in terms of the entries A, B, C, D correspondingly. And um, I'll give you the formula for A inverse now. So it's gonna be the scalar multiplication and the scalar is gonna be one over AD minus BC multiplies to a two by two matrix. And this two by two matrix is gonna be DA in the diagonal. And off the diagonal is gonna be minus B in the top right corner and the bottom left is minus C. And um, let's do a simple example here. So you see, if I give you this matrix, uh, the first row is three, one, and the second row is two, one. And we apply the formula directly to get the answer. To get an answer like this, as you can see, um, we have to check that um, 
this answer is actually correct, how to check that? And we can just apply the matrix multiplication to the two matrices here. So um, please recall how you run the matrix multiplication when you're given two by two matrices like these. And I trust that you still remember how to do that. For example, the first spot here is going to be the matrix multiplication, the first row of the first matrix multiplied to the first column of the second matrix. And you can easily check that this number is one, right? Because it's like uh, three times one plus one times minus two, right? And it's going to be one. And uh, easily you can check the remaining spot. It's going to be like this. And um, it means that uh, we we are convinced now that uh, A times A inverse is going to be the identity. So um, the, the other way, we have to do it the other way also. So um, you can write the two matrices like this uh, in different order. And surprisingly, although the the way you do the matrix multiplication now is different, but uh, we still get to the fact that the right hand side is going to be identity. And because um, we we are able to obtain uh, these two matrix equations, and we can easily claim that. Um, this answer is actually correct, right? It satisfies both equations. So um, this matrix is actually the inverse. And let me make a note here. So the first note is that um, the inverse of a matrix is actually unique. So uh, you won't see a second answer to the A inverse. Uh, there's only one answer if you're able to find it. So uh, the second note is that, so please look at the formula of the A inverse again for the two by two matrix. And uh, can you tell me, when is the matrix A invertible? You see, invertible basically means this formula is well defined. And um, singular basically means our inverse formula uh, has certain problem. It probably is not well defined. And please look at the scalar multiplication. Now the scale is basically a fraction, right? And uh, we claim that this formula is not well defined. In that case, it means A is singular because A inverse does not exist if the denominator in the scalar is zero, right? So uh, in that case, we call the matrix A um, singular. And similarly, A is invertible, which means such a formula now is defined when the denominator AD minus BC is going to be non-zero, right? And um, it's quite an interesting fact to observe. Uh, it basically means that for certain A, um, it's going to be singular. Some of them are going to be um, invertible. And let's look at another example now. So once again, is a two by two matrix. And I would like to ask you whether the given matrix is invertible or not. And please recall our formula is to check this. And now uh, AD is one times four minus BC is two times two, which is zero. And please recall from the previous note, we because uh, AD minus BC is now zero, we claim that um, it doesn't exist at all, basically. So it means that uh, A is actually uh, not invertible, right? And uh, that's the answer to this problem. And I would like to add more notes here. So this note is going to apply for all the invertible matrices. And in this video, we only see the formula to find the inverse of two by two matrices if it exists. And in the future, we'll look at more general formula to find the inverse of bigger matrices. But uh, this note is going to apply to all invertible matrices regardless size. And uh, for the first note is that if you take the inverse of a matrix A and you take the inverse again, you'll get back to the original matrix A. And um, this fact, I think, is not that surprising if you think about the meaning of taking inverse. And the second fact is that if you look at the product of AB and you take the inverse of it, let's say both are invertible. So I'm assuming that all the matrices we consider are invertible. And uh, actually, the fact is that the inverse of the product of AB is going to be B inverse times B inverse. Uh, can you prove that it is actually correct? You see, to prove that the inverse of AB is going to be this one, what we need to do is uh, we have to do this. We have to prove that these two matrix equations are actually correct because uh, please recall the definition of the inverse of a matrix. Now we consider the matrix as AB, the product of AB. So you have to look at the multiplication of these two matrices and no matter which order you use, will get the right hand side which must be an identity so uh, algebraically can you see why it must be true so um we just have to look at the first equation because to prove the second equation is almost identical to what we'll run for the first equation so for example let's look at the left hand side together so please recall the fact that um in general 
uh, matrix multiplication may not be commutative, right? So you cannot just change the order of multiplication. However, uh, we understand that matrix multiplication is actually associative. So um, the order of which product you do first uh, doesn't matter at all. So it means uh, in this case, we can change the order we do the matrix multiplication, for example. I can actually do the middle one first. And this one is actually identity, right? So it means uh, we get the matrix product B inverse times identity times B. And please recall, uh, identity serve like the row one in, if you do the matrix multiplication, which means it doesn't change um, the matrix it is multiplied to. For example, you can think of this first. In that case, um, we will have this. And please recall B times B inverse times B is going to be identity, right? And which means I get the right hand side of the first equation. So the proof of the equation one is done in that case. And equation two um, is actually a very similar proof. So we will skip that. 